there's wind mm -hmm. and flying through the white clouds. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tell me more. Hmm. Do you have a body in those white clouds? Hmm. If you're cold, you must be feeling something. What's, what kind of a body do you have? I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit, very good. Do you I like the clouds. Uh-huh. Do you feel like you're male or female? Mm -hmm. Do you have a gender? Female. Female. Where is it that you're going? Uh, where am I going? Allow yourself. Where am I going? Mm -hmm. Bring up the emotions as you're going. Where am I going? What do you feel as you're going through the clouds? this cold wind. I want to go sl sleep. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Mm. Tell me more. I'm having a hard time. You're um, doing very well. Keep going with this. What's happening next? I want to be able to see something. Well, you're not I going can't. to see. You're going to sense. Okay. We're sensing now. Okay. Okay. Dropping down. Mm -hmm. Now from the clouds. Very good. Allow yourself to feel the sensation. And tell me what you're sensing. The more you talk, the more I'll be able to help. So allow yourself mm -hmm. to drift down from those clouds. Going down 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 and as you drift lower and lower you'll be able to sense all around you I'm on a beach I'm on a beach very good like a little tropical island that's mm -hmm. sunny I could feel my toes in the sand. Mm. Look down at your toes. What do they look like? Well, I think they look like man's feet. Man's feet. Very good. What color are these feet? Mm. Kind of tan, mm -hmm. dirty. Tell me more about yourself. Look at the rest of your body. Okay. Um, hairy legs. Uh, raggedy, torn pants. A shirt. What color is this shirt? Uh, blue denim. Mm -hmm. Kind of look like I've been shipwrecked or something. Mm -hmm. How does the rest of you look? Uh, 
Oh, I have a beard. Mm -hmm. uh, brown hair. Blue eyes. Kind of rough. Uh, scraggy. Scraggy. Mm -hmm. Scraggly. Like I haven't been taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm around 30, 35. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're doing today on the beach? Uh, there's a ship out in the harbor. Mm -hmm. How big is this ship? Uh, it's... It, it's uh, like a old-time sailing ship with maybe three masts. Mm -hmm. And is there anybody on the ship? Oh, yeah, the whole crew is there. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're doing on the beach oh, today? I took a rowboat there. Mm -hmm. And I'm gathering coconuts and food and fresh water. For the for the ship. Mm -hmm. What role do you play on this ship? I'm just a deck hand. A deck hand. And how do you feel being on the shore? Oh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's weird. It feels weird to get my land legs back again. Mm -hmm. So let's find out how you got to be shipwrecked. Let's close that scene now. And let's go back in time to find out what happened before you were shipwrecked. What took you out of course? Be there now. Where are you? I, I was a slave and I was in the bottom rowing and a storm came. Um, lightning hit the mast mm -hmm. and I was able to swim swim ashore mm -hmm. but all the masters are gone so who are the ones left on the ship everybody's one now mm. we're all Shipwrecked. All shipwrecked. So there's no no one in charge. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you made it to shore? Someone had a key mm -hmm. and came down and unlocked all of us. And I was able to climb out the opening into the water and swim mm -hmm. away. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? Oh, it's good. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I was going to drown, though. But I didn't. Mm -hmm. So where are you now? I'm just going to lie on the beach and soak the sun up. Mm -hmm. Do nothing. It's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And do you hear or see those on the ship? No. Um, there's no one on the ship anymore. We're all on the island. Okay. But we can see the ship. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's see what happens next. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's move forward and find out what happens. Getting married. Mm -hmm. Getting married. Dancing. Mm -hmm. And drinking out of a jug. Tell me more. Oh, I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got rescued. Where are you? Did. Where are you now? I'm in a tavern. Mm -hmm. 
There's music playing. I think it's England. Mm-hmm. What year is this? 1873. Mm-hmm. And what do they call you? Joe. Mm-hmm. Joe, what is it that you do as a profession? Well, I'm a sailor. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. But I don't... Oh, I don't want to cross the ocean anymore. Mm-hmm. So what do you do now? Oh, oh, I, um, I'm a fisherman, mm -hmm. so I just stay local. Okay. I just catch fish locally. That, does that make you happier? Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel safe. Very good. So, Joe, let's close that scene and let's now go to another scene in that same lifetime where something impacted your life. Be there now. I see a fire. Mm -hmm. I see a fire. Where is this fire? In London. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, huge fire. And what are you doing there, Joe? Uh, I'm grabbing my wife and kids and putting them in my boat and we're rowing away. But there's so many people I can't save. Mm -hmm. I feel so bad. I don't have enough room in the boat. So what happens? Oh, so many people die. How does that make you feel? Horrible. Oh, the smell. Mm -hmm. Burning flesh. Tell me more. What happens next? Hmm. We get away and we go to a, a lighthouse. We live in the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Anything else important about that scene? I lost a lot of friends mm -hmm. unto a horrible death. Mm -hmm. Let's save my family. Mm -hmm. That's what counts. Yes. So let's close that scene, Joe, and let's now go to the last days of your life in that lifetime. And tell me where you are. around you. I'm in bed. Mm -hmm. How old are you, Joe? 73. Mm -hmm. What's happening with your life? That was good. Mm -hmm. uh, I have someone taking care of me, but it's not my wife. What happened to your wife, Joe? Oh, she moved away to take care of the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Left me. How does that make you feel? I. I think I feel better without her. Mm hmm. I don't think we got along very well, mm -hmm. so I, I like my nurse better. <laughs> okay, good. So now, Joe, let's go to the last moment of your life in that lifetime and tell me what happens. <sighs> Just took a deep breath out. Mm -hmm. And where did you and go? I float up. All right. So as you float up and you can look back at that lifetime, Joe, what was the purpose of that lifetime? Man, I had it hard. Mm -hmm. 
I was captured as a boy and made to be a slave for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And then I survived the lightning and shipwreck and was saved. Uh, I don't know why it was so hard. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that life? Never to give up. Never to give up. That things are always going to get better. So, Joe, how is it that you are impacting the life of Julie? Uh, she doesn't like to ask for help. Mm -hmm. She has to do things on her own. Is that because of your life? Yes, because no one was ever there for me to help me. Mm -hmm. But that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Are there any things that are holding her back from your life? She is afraid of water mm -hmm. and of drowning. Mm -hmm. Hates to swim. But that's about it. Any any tips that you would like to give Julie? Well, I don't think I was very good at opening up to love because mm -hmm. it's it was a soft emotion, but Julie doesn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I, I can't really teach her anything. Mm -hmm. Are you holding her back in any way, Joe? Mm. No. Good. So can she access your information as to how to be a survivor? Mm -hmm. How to never give up any time she needs? Mm -hmm. Very good. So, Joe, I'd like for you to continue on your journey, and let's find out what happens after you meet with those that welcome you home. Mm. Where do you go? Just alone. Mm -hmm. And I see a light approaching. Mm -hmm. And as it approaches, it gets warmer. How does that make you feel, it's, that light? First I was afraid, but now I like the, the warmth. Mm -hmm. What is that light? Oh, it's feeling like, like love. It's just wrapped around me like a blanket. Mm -hmm. Communicate with this light. What is this light? Source. Mm -hmm. It's... I'm a part of it. Everybody's a part of it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just kind of uh, like a spark that's going back into the flame. Mm -hmm. It's kind of reverse of a spark going out. I'm just going back into the light. Mm -hmm. And do you get any connection with that light? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a flame. It's strong. Mm -hmm. Communicate with that flame. Let's see if that flame has any words for you. Any thoughts? I, it says, I am pure love. Mm -hmm. So feel that love through every fiber of your being. 
soak it in, make it yours. Remember who you are. I am pure love. I am pure love. Pure love. <sighs> Engrave this memory into every part of your being <sighs> so that everything that you do from now on is a reflection of pure love. Every decision you make, every choice, is based on who you truly are. Pure love. I am pure love. And now that you understand that you are pure love, what decision did this pure love make before incarnating into the life of Julie? Have a life in which you are pure love, and other people can feel that pure love of source when they're with you. They can feel it. It's gonna radiate out from your from your eyes and your voice and your essence. Don't ever doubt that. There's nothing you have to do. Is that the purpose of Julie's life in this incarnation? Yes. That is her vibration, and that those who are open will be able to raise their vibration to pure love when they're with her. Their hearts have to be open to it, and it's hard because for Julie because she wants everybody to be open to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's people who are not and that when the people are not open to to her pure love, she feels that she has failed. Mm. How can you reassure her that she hasn't failed? You cannot fail. But you cannot save everyone either. Mm -hmm. She wants to save everyone. That's why it's so hard. Mm -hmm. Was this a contract that she made or a decision? It was her contract mm -hmm. before coming to this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Who did she make this contract with? Oh. With herself, mm -hmm. with her soul group, with sores, but there are those in her soul group who purposely will not accept her love mm. as a lesson to her. Ah. Is she fulfilling this contract? 
Yeah, so she needs to stop being so hard on herself mm -hmm. and feeling like a failure. Where in her life does she feel like a failure when it comes to being pure love? <laughs> With her parents. Mm -hmm. Not feeling accepted by them. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to tell her about that? They, this was a contract to teach you that each person is on their own journey and that you cannot, it's not about saving people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not what your contract was, was to save anyone. It was simply to be pure love in this world with no restrictions and when you feel like you failed and you feel shame and feel unloved you're not fulfilling your contract What's the best way for her to let it go? To trust that all is according to plan. Mm -hmm. Now you say that she had this contract with her soul group, Source. Who else is in her soul group? Oh, her mom and dad. Mm -hmm even though that's really hard for her to believe mm -hmm. because she's always felt rejected by them. Mm -hmm. Why is it that she chose to be in that role of feeling rejection? Um, it's so that she can help others who feel rejected. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good role that she chose. It was. Mm -hmm. It was by design. Mm -hmm. She could it, it was so that she could have empathy mm -hmm. and understanding and be helpful for those who feel rejected by others. Does she need to have that same role now that she understands that with her parents? No. So can she play a different role with them now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what kind of role would you imagine would be a good one to play so that she can help others? She can trust mm -hmm. that they have only acted the way that they have out of love for her and helping her grow mm -hmm. as a soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and to know that nothing that happens here on this plane can change the fact that they are in her soul group and that they love her. Mm -hmm. And isn't it true? that when one changes oneself, that everything around changes uh -huh. to match what decision one has made. Yes. Mm -hmm. So being that she has now made a decision that she doesn't need to play that role anymore, can you see the dynamics changing? Yes. Mm -hmm. There is no more fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. So once you break down the fear of rejection, what does that do to a relationship? It just, it removes that area in your psyche that was damaged mm -hmm. and it fills it just with pure love. Mm -hmm. So allow that part of her that may have been damaged in the past, go ahead and fill that now with pure love. Understanding that they were playing a role for her growth and understanding.
You can tell me when that's done. Yes. Very good. Now, when we first started off this session, we came across an African chief, Chief Tatunda. Is Tatunda one of her guides? Yes. Mm -hmm. What role does he play in her life? It was an arrangement that she was not going to feel loved as a child, mm. but he, it, he, he was there to love her, and she always felt his love, mm -hmm. even though she didn't feel her parents' mm -hmm. love. She always felt loved. Is he a main spirit guide, or was he there just for that portion of her life? Main spirit mm -hmm. guide. So what, what is he there doing now? What is he guiding her with now? He's her love guide. Her love guide. Yeah. So does he have anything to do with her work? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does he have a message for her besides what we heard before? That he is always in the room with her mm -hmm. and that she cannot fail ever. And that all she needs to do is stay in the love vibration and healing will take place. Good. Now, is there another guy that helps her with her health? Her health? Or is it the same guide? She feels lost with her health. Mm -hmm. What's happening there? She doesn't know how to get healthy. Mm -hmm. She feels lost and all alone. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happened to put her in this situation. When we first started this session, she felt very lost in the clouds. Is she feeling lost the same way with her yes. health? Yes, it's, it's the physical body. It's almost as if she doesn't... <laughs> want that physical body anymore. Mm -hmm. She's really like rejecting it mm -hmm. and just wants to be in the spirit world. So she wants to be that spirit going through the clouds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's just, she loves her work. She loves her mission and what she does, but she doesn't want this body. Mm -hmm. Is this body weighing her down? Yes. Uh -huh. Is that why she's unable to lose weight? Yeah. What does she see her body as? Just a stone. Mm. Heavy stone. A heavy stone. That's weighing her down. Okay. So I have seen stones that have been chiseled away into beautiful works of art. I'd like for you to go ahead and show her one of those stone statues of a beautiful Greek goddess. And show her how that stone, although it's on earth, can look beautiful. Show her the lines, the details. Very good. And then those stone statues can be replicated into things that are much lighter. So I'd like for you now to transform that same statue into something much lighter. Perhaps you can even turn it into plastic. It's marshmallow. Marshmallow, that's right. But let's not lose the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's marshmallow, you know that at one point that marshmallow can just dissolve So let's begin dissolving all of that extra weight that is around her body. Just like you can dissolve that marshmallow. And show her the body that she truly is meant to have. Show her in the mirror how that marshmallow completely changes form. 
into the one who can represent pure love. Who does she look like? She's thin. Mm -hmm. Healthy and happy and toned. Mm -hmm. So now as she does her martial arts, she does her exercise, her walking, her body will now adjust to the metabolism of that fit woman in the mirror, not that heavy stone. So let's engrave that in her memory and remind her of what a beautiful fit body eats, how it feels, show her the foods that will work best with this body, show her the movements that will allow her to keep this body firm and fit. And when she looks in the mirror and is reminded that she is pure love, allow her to sculpt that body simply with her thoughts and her love. And tell me when we're done with the transformation. Very good. So as her higher self, how do you see the changes in Julie's life now that she has transformed herself inside and out? She's walk, hiking more, walking out of nature. Mm -hmm. Feels, she loves to to exercise, to mm -hmm. move, to run up and down the stairs. She's eating light foods. Very good. And now that we understand what her body will be doing when it's awake, let's find out about what her body and her mind and her spirit does when she's asleep. Where is it that Julie goes in her dreams? Why such vivid dreams? First thing that comes to mind is Neverland. <laughs> Neverland? I don't know what that means. Okay. So would you take her to Neverland now and show her where is this playground that she goes to at night? It's just a... It's a place you can be a kid again. Mm -hmm. And there's adventure and fantasy and playfulness and fun. Seems to be squirrels there too. <laughs> yeah. Lots of, yeah, animals. Mm -hmm. um, my dog Sparky, mm -hmm. he died, he's there. Mm -hmm. So what does she do in Neverland? Why does she pick to go there at night? Because she is joyful there. Mm -hmm. And she teaches. Who does she teach? She teaches children. Mm -hmm. So let's eavesdrop now on one of her classes and let's find out what it is that she's teaching. Uh -huh. We're on a cliff overlooking a beach and there's a campfire and we're around the campfire and I'm teaching the children how to feel their heart mm -hmm. and how to expand their heart. 
And who are these children? These are souls yet to be born. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing them for birth mm -hmm. and also teaching them uh, that life can be hard and how to heart, how to strengthen mm -hmm. their heart. Mm -hmm. So her role is really all about the heart and mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in these dreams, did she ever see her own children before they came here? She, oh, wow. The people that she meets in her life, especially like the clients that she helps mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. she helped them as children before they were born. Mm. So they're coming back into her life. The people that come to her. Mm -hmm. Has she always had this role? Always, but for a very long time, mm -hmm. she had to do, to grow into being into the role of a teacher. Mm -hmm. She had many mentors. Now, these this role as a teacher was it in this lifetime, or has been in other lifetimes too? Has she done it's this more in the spirit world? In the spirit, it's not world. on the earth plane. Okay, so this is her role in spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the people that she meets are these people that she teaches these children she prepares in them in every lifetime in every lifetime do these people ever come back in every lifetime to be with her yes do they have an agreement with her yes so she's a teacher in spirit and she's a teacher also in human yes hmm so it continues. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're her, her students, mm -hmm. and she loves children because they're playful. Mm -hmm. and that's why she likes going to Neverland in her dreams, uh, because she can be a child again, and it's so much fun. But she's the kind of uh, teacher who who is still a child mm -hmm. at heart. So how can we make more of that? Neverland into her own life here to make it more fun. She needs to be around children more. Okay. So what can she do to be around children more? Um, maybe take on more clients who are children mm -hmm. that she can play with, do play therapy, and she loves doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think she kind of started giving all the children to the interns, mm -hmm. and she needs to take some of them for herself. Yes. Is she giving away some of the stuff that she likes to do? Well, it started out giving away the things she didn't like. She doesn't like to work with depression, so she would give away depression mm -hmm. but then she had someone who an intern who was really good with children so she just mm -hmm. let her have the children mm -hmm. but that means now Julie isn't getting to work with the children and that makes her so happy so can I ask one of her guides to assist her to get her back to doing what she loves to do mm -hmm. good what spirit guides are helping her with her clients? Ezekiel. Ezekiel. So what is Ezekiel's role? He helps Julie step back and just be a conduit. Mm -hmm. um, and he puts the words in her mouth that each client needs to hear. And he is the one speaking through her. Mm -hmm. So she's cha she's channeling. Yeah, she's Ezekiel. channeling. Mm -hmm. She's channeling Ezekiel. Yeah. Yes. How can she develop more of these skills 
this mediumship and clairvoyance skill because beyond the classes that she's taking. Meditation. Meditation. And and understanding that what, what she is doing. She <laughs> was just doing it and not having an understanding of what she was doing. Mm -hmm. So she's already doing uh -huh. channeling, and she didn't even understand. No, she she didn't know she was channeling. Mm -hmm. But she was already doing it. She didn't know she was doing it. <laughs> yeah. So she's already ahead of the game. Yeah. And didn't even know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any other? <laughs> is there any other skills that she needs to to acquire? Because she seems to be uh, a, a lifetime student. She enjoys uh -huh. learning. Everything. What other skills does she need to pick up? Uh, teaching mindfulness. Mindfulness. That mm -hmm. would be a good one. Good. And what about hypnosis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would be helpful for her? She... If she can get over the fearfulness. Mm -hmm. What's blocking her from that? She has fear that she won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Was that re fear reflecting today in her session? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What was blocking her at the beginning? What was that fear all about? She felt too awake. <laughs> ah. Mm-hmm. So was this on purpose to show her that she's already channeling? <laughs> oh. That she doesn't need to be asleep to channel? Oh my goodness, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Oh my goodness. That is absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> well, my higher self channels too. <laughs> yeah. You just did. Mm -hmm. Well, you have been all along. Mm -hmm. So now can we understand why she was freaking out at the beginning? <laughs> can you understand? Yes, mm -hmm. that was it. Mm. That's so interesting because in the past when she's been hypnotized, she has felt so much of a, in a deeper trance state. And this trance state felt too light, and it felt like she was doing it wrong. So what would you like to tell her about that? That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> B.S. Mm -hmm. So we now understand that Julie does not have to be in a deep hypnotic trance in order to have a good experience. Oh boy, that was a stupid little ego thing. Mm-hmm. So is this something that she can take with her as part of her skills to not give up on her clients? Yes. When they think that they have to be deep. Yes. Mm. She wanted to be this asleep. This was a huge lesson. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be asleep. She didn't want to be hypnotized. <laughs> she wanted to go to sleep, to Neverland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, giving up control is another thing, mm -hmm. lesson here. Mm-hmm. So she was expecting it to be the same mm -hmm. as she has had it before, mm -hmm. and that got her into fear. So do we? Yeah. can we remind her of who she is again? I am pure love. Mm -hmm. And what is the opposite of love? Fear. Right. Does she need to, to walk amok in that fear anymore? She can rise above that. Mm -hmm. So when she is in a situation that she feels is not under her control, and fear comes bubbling up, mm -hmm. what can she do? She can get in touch with her heart space mm -hmm. and feel that spark of light and then imagine it growing larger and larger and larger till it's this beautiful sphere of white light that's surrounding her, filled with love and to remind herself that she is pure love. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Now, Julie also had some expectations about finding out about the event. What can you tell her about this 
event that everyone's talking about. She wants to experience some of it. The her wanting to experience the event is contributing to her um, wanting to leave her body. Mm. It's it's a little bit of control thing. Mm-hmm. Tell it's, her about that. Um, it, it said if I can, I guess it's um, if I could just figure out more about the event and what it is and what's it going to be like. Um, then I can imagine myself more in the spirit body and I don't have to be in, in this body. Mm-hmm. That's what, is that what's happening with a lot of people? Yes. Wanting to go to their own neverland? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's this um, looking for the grass is greener on the other side type thing. Mm-hmm. Instead of being in the present moment, which is, that's what mindfulness is, right? Yes. Is that why you wanted her to use more of that, to be in the moment of now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what happens when one is more in the moment of now? That's the only place they can truly be happy. Mm Mm-hmm. Because if we're, oh, I'm going to be happy when the event comes, I'm going to be happy when, when I'm in the new world, I'm going to be happy when, 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 Mm-hmm. We lose out on all the seconds. Yes. They're not moments. They're like microseconds of happiness that are right here in front of our eyes. Mm-hmm. So we need to put ourselves back, grounded back into the present moment. Mm-hmm. Because everybody's asking, when is this going to happen? Yes. When is the transition to the new earth? How long will it take to assimilate this energy? Can my family go with me? Yeah, you know what it just reminds me of is when I work with premarital clients and they're only focused on the wedding and not the relationship. Uh huh. They just want the wedding. And they're planning all their focuses on the wedding. But they're not looking at how can I make this a good relationship. Mm-hmm. So as this wonderful marital counselor imagining that this wedding is like the event what would what what would you like to give her advice on relationship each and every relationship make it golden make it pure love and then i will be living as if i was in the new earth mhm and what Already. About, and it won't be there. Uh huh. So, would it be like visiting the new earth? It won't be like visiting. It'll be there. Uh-huh. I'll be there. Mm hmm. It's so, a, it's a, think of it as like a dimension shift. I can shift to that dimension by doing that. And I sometimes feel myself shifting into another dimension already. Mm hmm. So would you call this event more of a dimensional shift? Yes, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So does that illuminate her now? Yes. Kind of lights up her light bulb? Oh my gosh, it's a Dorothy moment. I'm wearing the red ruby slippers. (laughs) 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 And I'm clicking my heels together. Mm-hmm. I'm here right now. There's no place like home, but that's where I am here right now. Mm-hmm. So does that make her understand more about this event? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a shift in consciousness. Yep. Very good. It's, it's just like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. She had everything that she needed all along to go back to Kansas. Mm-hmm. We all have everything that we need to shift to the new earth. We don't have to wait for something to happen. 
There's no place like home. So, would you suggest that when we're thinking about the new earth, we repeat that mantra? There's no place like home. Yes. Yes. Is that perfect? Or what? It always is. Beautiful, isn't it? It is so beautiful. There's no place like home. And I think that if we can fully ground ourselves in the present moment, that we will find true peace, joy, happiness, all the things that we're looking for in that new earth. And they're right in front of our eyes. They're here. They're in the air around us. Mm -hmm. So now that Julie understands this, how can she move forward? By staying still. <laughs> Mm -hmm. being more mindful yes of every moment look I, in my office i have a clock that says now mm -hmm. with no numbers on it mm -hmm. every time i want to every time i look at my now clock i'm going to remind myself that i have everything that i need in this moment in the now mm -hmm. wonderful anything else about this that you'd like to tell her Mm -hmm. Very good. So now that we understand that everything happens in the now, what's going on with her body? We already know that the weight was about her perception of the way she felt as a rock, as very heavy. What about the other things that are going on with her? Let's take a scan of her mm. body and find out. What's causing all of this, these issues with her body? Oh. The psoriasis she's had since she was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if it has to do with that feel, feeling of being rejected mm -hmm. by her parents. So let's go back. I want you to follow. That's psoriasis. Follow it back through the tunnel of time. And let's see where it began. What was the origin? What does the representation of psoriasis mean to her? Oh my God. <laughs> psoriasis is an autoimmune disorder which is a part of your body rejecting mm -hmm. another part of the body mm -hmm. so it is rejection so what is she representing with her psoriasis oh, it's... what is she telling herself <sighs> it's all the time she felt rejected Mm-hmm. Can we make peace with that today? Mm-hmm. And now let's take a deep breath in and let's find out how that psoriasis now will met will continue oh. will it continue to manifest or how No, because mm -hmm. I'm no longer rejected. Very good. Is the dry skin the same thing? Uh, it's kind of a more hereditary thing. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why she chose that. She got it from her grandpa. Mm -hmm. Why does she choose to bring that reminder um, of dry skin into her life? <laughs> well, she can't be perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has to have something to make her suffer so that she can understand suffering mm, okay does she need to remember how to suffer by dry having dry skin <laughs> does it make any sense no okay so can we begin hydrating her skin again yes. understanding that this is something that she chose because it just happened to be convenient what else do you see in her body that needs her thyroid okay 
Now, the thyroid is the powerhouse of the body. What's going on with that thyroid? Um, What's it reminding? Some little, little pe pebbles in there. Okay, let's little find tiny. out. Let's find out what those pebbles represent. Where did they originate from? Mm. What created those pebbles? Did she create them? Hardness. Mm. Let's follow that hardness back. Keep repeating that word, Hard. and let's find out what that hardness yes. came from. This. Oh, this has to do with be with this feeling that I have to be strong mm -hmm. and never allow any weakness to uh, manifest. Or, gosh, it's that sailor. It's mm -hmm. that Joe. Do we need to have Joe, reminder from Joe, do we need to have those pebbles from the beach in her thyroid anymore? No. All right. So what would we like to do to dissolve those? Would you like to use a liquid or a light? An amber liquid. Beautiful. So go ahead and begin flushing those stones in the thyroid. Tell me what it looks like as you're dissolving them. Getting smaller and smaller to grains of sand, and now they're being washed out into the ocean. Beautiful. So I'd like for Archangel Raphael to step forward and begin putting his beautiful green healing light into that thyroid. Feel it soothing it like an ointment from the spiritual realm. And while he's doing that, go ahead and fill her entire body with that light so that her skin begins to feel the effect of that green light. Like a beautiful ointment through her whole body. Soothing, refreshing, hydrating. Raphael, thank you. I love you so much. And thank you for helping me in my healing work. Mm -hmm. What does Raphael say? What message does he have for he you today? Like <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. He is always there helping me with my healing work. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's continue with her body and see if there's anything else. Uh. Take a look at her mouth, her yeah, jaw. Yeah, her mouth, her jaw. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? There's a sore in there that's been there a little while, and then a root. She was supposed to have a root canal, and she had an extreme pain, but she did a healing meditation, and she was able to heal. And she hasn't had any pain since. But the remainder that was left over was this was a um, like a little sore. So let's find out what was the origin of all of this. What is causing that claw, that jaw clenching, and that soreness and the the stress? Mm -hmm. So why is the stress affecting her mouth? Let's find out. Mm. Why that area? What is she keeping herself from saying? Writing. Mm. Writing. She needs to be writing. Mm -hmm. But she already uses her voice through speaking, but she needs to use her voice through writing. Okay, good. Is that why she's clenching yeah. her jaw? Yes. She's not letting it out? Yes. Very good. It's like clenching a pencil. Mm-hmm. So what, can we take that imaginary pencil out of her mouth, stop chewing on it, and start writing with it? Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'll give. go ahead and give her a new pencil, one that flows. 
very freely. And let's go ahead and send that beautiful green light into her mouth, releasing all of the tension. Allow that stress to just be dissipated with that green light. Feel it going into every pore. And tell me when it's done. Very good. What's causing her to crave so much sugar? She likes sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's her kid. It's the kid in her. The kid in her. The kid that, that used to ride her bike down to the candy store and mm -hmm. and that was her treat and it made her so happy to buy candy. Mm -hmm. So what can we, we replace that candy with so mm. that she doesn't hurt her body with sweets? Mm. What sweetness can we replace that with? Mm, being around children. Mm -hmm. They're the sweetest thing on this earth. So let's take sugar and let's replace that with something else. That she doesn't have to crave it. What, where she, can she get her cravings fulfilled, even if there's no children around? Mm, drinking more. Um, water, mm -hmm. um, the sugar-free fruit juices that she's been drinking, mm -hmm. those are, those really taste satisfying to her, mm -hmm. kind of satisfy that sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. Can we, she replace it with sweets that are natural, for example, raisins or dates or things like that? Oranges, mm -hmm. things that may be sweet. Fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's begin working on her taste buds. And I'd like for you to go ahead and begin transforming the taste buds so that they begin to crave that beautiful fruit. Things that she can crave now. I like the idea of craving raisins. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. And cherries and pears and mm -hmm. apples. That's right. So that when she gets a sweet tooth, she mm -hmm. can she'll have a nice big bowl of fruit or a mm -hmm. basket of fruit so she can go ahead and moderately go after that. Mm -hmm. Very good. So why is it that she has hunger and headaches? She seems to be working long hours, not eating as much. What's going on there with her body? Mm. Why is she getting headaches? Just lack of nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's just poor nutrition. Poor nutrition. Mm -hmm. So can I ask on her behalf for a guide who is a motivational trainer? wonderful chef and nutrition expert that can give her tips and ideas on how to create very nice snacks that will be nutritious, that will fill her up in those moments when she cannot eat. And when she does have a meal, that it be a nutritious meal that is good for her body, good for her spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Very good. So go ahead and begin giving her pictures in her mind now of the types of food that this guide is going to be sending her to. And let me know if that guide has a name that will be helping her with her health. Horatio. Horatio, very good. Good, so when she goes to the supermarket, she can ask for Horatio to help. 
If she gets a craving, she could ask for Horatio to slap her upside the head <laughs> and give her a nice picture of what she should be craving. Yes. Can we do that? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Horatio. Mm -hmm. Good. Anything else that you would like to address about her health? How does she look inside this pure being of light? All her cells look healthy. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, what was the purpose that you brought Julie here today? I get her to stop obsessing about the event. Mm -hmm. This is too much. Mm -hmm. So, is she going to now focus on mindfulness and being mm -hmm. in the now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you were hoping she would get from this session? Healing with her mom, mm -hmm. a reminder that she is a being pure love, mm -hmm. that she cannot fail, mm -hmm. and that everything that she needs is she already has in this exact moment of now. Mm -hmm. Very good. So she should have more of those now clocks around her house. Yeah, huh? she needs one at home. <laughs> That's so a she, good idea. So she could be reminded mm -hmm. that now is the only time there is? That's the only time. Good. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you would like to tell her? Or anyone else? I want to tell you thank you for the work that you do, Alba. You are such a light in this world. Thank you for those kind words. I guess I'm just doing my mission. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else or are we complete today? I think we're complete. Thank you so much. Wide awake feeling wonderful. All of Oh. Good job. Beautiful session. Oh, that was beautiful. Let's ground you with some shungai. We have the selenite back. And... So what do you think, my dear? Oh. Very incredible, huh? It's on that golden cocoon of love and light. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we see that uh, this session was totally different for you. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Totally. It was meant to be like that. It was, yeah. It was hard. I had to keep shutting up my ego and my mind. Mm -hmm. You see how how um, on purpose it was? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It wasn't until I connected with mm -hmm. that source and yeah. it reminded me of who I was that yeah. all of a sudden, wow, I could let go. It's pretty, yeah. pretty incredible. You can see that so every, every session is totally different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's experience is different. And even when somebody, somebody's experience, they think that it's something hard, that it's really not going to work, I'm not going to give up on you. No. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I know not, you wouldn't. I, I, I wasn't paying attention to your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew whining. you wouldn't You're give whining. up on me, but... Um, but you see how at the end they all tied in together as to why you oh, went through that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All the dots get connected at the end. It creates a constellation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it is so amazing. I thought it was pretty good. That was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it would be... And I tried not to have any expectations of how that would happen, <laughs> but, but I found <laughs> that my it wasn't my expectation of the session that got in the way. Yeah. My expectation of what it felt like to be in hypnosis, that's what it was. And you needed to have that expectation. I had to have that. You had that experience. Yes. Because when people come here and they tell me, oh, I'm not hypnotized. Well, yeah, I, I know you are. <laughs> you, just, you just don't think you are. <laughs> Now, what you think and what I know is quite a difference. Okay? 
Okay. Yeah, so. so it's it's really it's your ego kind of fighting, saying, "Well, that this is not what I thought it was going to be." And yes. you even said it. I want to go to sleep. I did. I said, "I want to go deeper. I no, want to go to sleep." And you always say, "You want to go to sleep." Yes. But remember, hypnosis is not sleep. Right. So your ego was kind of saying, "Well, yeah, but I want to just like go off into Neverland, like I always do." Yes. But this was not Neverland. <laughs> Pretty interesting. That's huh? so. It kind of makes sense why my dreams are so crazy if I'm in Neverland. I mean, in that You're place. Kid. It's like a being. A I'm kid. just a kid. I love. Yeah. So, how long do you think this journey was? How did it feel? It felt like an hour. An hour and a half. Huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. You connected all the dots. It oh, all, everything. It made total sense. Everything pulled together. And what about this event? I'm so relieved mm -hmm. that I can let go of it. <laughs> It was pretty stressful. It was. I think that's what it was people, stressful. A lot of people do feel a lot of stress. Yes. It was creating this expectation and when is it going to happen? And that, that it creates anxiety. And that analogy of a wedding was perfect. Yeah. A lot of people go into a marriage only planning their wedding. And, and they I forget, know that. They forget that there is a life that's right. after that. And that they need to be focusing on the relationship. And no. Let's fix that. Exactly. The wedding's not going to fix it. No. So the same thing with Such the event. Perfect. People are talking about the event when really it's now that you yes. have to live in. And when you live in bliss now. That's right. You know what's, what's the weirdest thing, Alba? Mm -hmm. I was in that state until I started hearing about the event. See? That's what's yeah. kind of like... Hijacked you? It hijacked me. So it kind of makes you think, huh? It really makes me so think. So what's the agenda? Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. literally I was in that state. Yeah. I feel like that's what yeah. made my jaw clench and mm -hmm. gave me all that tension. Yeah. So you think that maybe this event may be causing a little bit of fear? It's causing some, because the people that know about it, I don't think fear it. It, it, um, I think it's creating anxiety, mm -hmm. anxiety, and anxiety is trying to control the future when we have no control. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Yes, yes. And so here I am teaching people how not to be anxious. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, it's hilarious! It is so funny. Sometimes we have to go through the experience ourselves in order to understand what we're teaching. Well, you're absolutely right. And I just remembered um, when uh, one of my uh, guides through, through a medium told me, Julie, you need to practice more of what you preach. Right. Well, I didn't understand go. that. There you go. Now I get it. Wow. That was the message. Unbelievable. So you want to keep this private or you want to share? Oh, I definitely want to share. Okay. I think this is an important message that we... Are wearing the ruby red slippers all along we have everything that we need to be happy we don't need anything else we don't need to do anything or to be anything we're here and now in the now <laughs> that was you. great Aww. wasn't it that was life-changing yeah so yeah. Julie has been hypnotized many 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 times okay mm -hmm. and auto your own hypnosis you've gone to people you've had hypnosis sessions mm. how, how was this one different from you for the for I was you? in in the beginning i was nervous because it didn't feel the the same it felt like i was just awake and just talking only my eyes were closed mm -hmm. in the beginning and i was fighting with myself this doesn't feel right am i really hypnotized and i i want to go to sleep i want to go deeper <laughs> <laughs> and now you realize you were in oh. hypnosis. You just had different expectations. Mm -hmm. You yes. had expectations that you were going to be asleep because that's what you were actually saying. I want to go to sleep. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> right? So now you realize. Well, part of it, I didn't sleep well last night. Well. I thought this would be a good place to take a nap. <laughs> so how far did you travel? Oh, how far did I travel? Where, where, are you, where are you coming from? Oh, I came from... Orange County, California. California, and we're in Atlanta, Georgia right now. So was it worth, worth oh, coming over here? Oh, it was worth every penny. It was worth every penny. This was a life-changing event. Thank you so much. And how do you feel? I am a different person. 
I have you call this the the heal, uh, journey of forgiveness. Yeah, the I spiritual have, journey of forgiveness. I have um, forgiven myself. That's that's the and most I important feel there is. Forgiven. Yeah. And, and now do you know that you are pure light? Yes. You said it many times. That's your new mantra. I am pure light. Mm -hmm. And did that feel good? <laughs> So we also were told about the event that's out there all over the internet. And now, how do you feel about the event? I feel like I'm, I'm going to stop waiting for the day that it comes in order to be happy and live my mm -hmm. life fully. And I'm going to start doing that in the present moment. Yeah, you have to live the moment of now. You have to be happy now. And really, everything in life is about that. You have to... Uh, be what it is that you want to be. So if you want to be happy, start being happy. You can't wait for something to make you happy. It's all about being. We are human beings. You have to be happy. So let's not think about what's going to happen. Think about what is happening. Live in the moment. Be happy. Be satisfied. Love. Be, be the loving person that you are. And that's, I think, what the whole message was. It was. Yes. And that there's nothing that needs to happen in order for you to be happy. That's Got it. Everything that you need. And I believe that every human being has everything they already need in order to be happy. That's it. There's no place like home. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> click, click, click. So this was a really nice session. We, we just connected all the dots. It was, it, was a, it was one of those eye openers. It was fun watching you going, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it all makes sense. So much insight. Everything, even the little the little pieces of uh, whatever you had in your throat. It was mm -hmm. all about not expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yes. It was amazing. Yes, it truly was amazing. And I would highly recommend everybody to see Alpha. She's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, that's the only way to get a session. Go to albawyman.com. Click on the out-of-town link, even if you're in Miami. And there I will be sending you a newsletter. I send out links to my calendars where I'll be holding my sessions. When you get that newsletter, do it immediately because they book within minutes. Okay? And I hope you enjoyed this session. I did. And I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>